Contentment is a long-term state of homeostasis regardless of your circumstances. That is quite a mouthful. And so we're gonna really dive into what contentment means and how we can work on becoming more content. I'm so glad that you are here today. My name is Becky Truda and on Minimalese, I like to talk about decluttering and minimizing and living your best life. Today is all about contentment. That is our theme. How do we reach this very aloof concept that is contentment? If you haven't yet, remember to hit that subscribe button. A new video will come out next week, but let's dive into really the meat of what contentment is. It says contentment is homeostasis, like peace without it being changed. What, how is that even possible? I think a lot of us think of content when we think of terms like happiness. And unfortunately, happiness is one of those things that is fleeting. I think we all know that, you know, like in the Declaration of Independence, that's like one of the things that we're called to uh, have a right to have happiness. But you can't have happiness at all times. You might be happy in one minute where someone tells you a joke and the next minute someone cuts you off on the highway, you're no longer happy. So that's not really something that I am after achieving. I don't think that's something that I am ever going to reach a state where I am always happy. But contentment is different. Contentment is where you can find peace in where you are and hopefully find gratefulness in where you are. And that is what I am after. That is something that I think that I can keep in my life if I practice it. I've been studying this message of contentment uh, through a lot of people, the minimalists, a few other people that I follow on their podcasts. I've read books about it. What I've come to find is that contentment is an exercise. Um, I am not great at exercising. It's one of the things that I'm trying to get better at. It's one of my goals this year is to be better at exercising my body. But on the other end of it, Contentment is an exercise. Contentment is one of the things that you have to practice every day. And so one way that I practice contentment every day is I have a journal. I write down one thing that has brought me either peace or happiness or something that I am grateful for every day. I think last night I wrote down that uh, my husband in the morning had helped me make my coffee. So it doesn't need to be this like life-changing moment you had in your life that you are so grateful for. It's the simple stuff. Like, did your kid kiss you? Good night. Did they want you to read you a book? Maybe if you have a teenager, were they not rude to you for a half an hour that day? <laughs> um, it's really being able to find the little moments in your life because we don't have big moments every day. Every day is very special but not every day is your best day. My husband made me coffee yesterday and he doesn't always do that. And you know, it's not something I ask of him every day, but I did ask if he would make it and he gratefully obliged. And that made me so grateful that I have someone in my life who's very helpful. So I'm sure we can all find something, the tiniest thing, the most minute thing, that had brought us a little bit of contentment, something we can be grateful for. It really is an exercise in contentment is journaling. And even if you don't like journaling, um, I've learned that I write down one thing before I go to bed in my journal, but you could just say it out loud. If you just take one moment out of your very busy life and say one thing that made you grateful for being alive that day, those things start compounding just like exercise does just like if you were to raise a couple dumbbells every day, your arms would slowly get a little bit stronger. Contentment is an exercise that you have to practice every day. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but I am saying that journaling and writing down things that you're grateful for and taking a moment out of your life to just be grateful has really helped in the overall daily contentment of my life. When you're at dinner, what we like to do is we ask about what was our high that day? What was our thing that we remember? And we don't even say the word grateful, but it's the fact of taking a moment, we all take a moment and we just remember something 
that made us really happy that day. A lot of times my daughter's uh, highs for her day will be something that immediately is happening right now, or it's something that I would think is so minute, like maybe a friend smiled at her, but it's something that um, her little brain is grateful for. And so I like that she gets a chance to share that. Something that you have to instill in yourself, but it's something that you can also spread to your whole family. You can spread it to your children. And it's not necessarily something that you have to talk about all the time, but it's just remembering in those little moments, like if you're getting ready to go out and buy something, and maybe you didn't necessarily need it. Maybe you're walking around the store and you're realizing you don't need it at all. Saying out loud, correcting yourself and saying, oh wait, I didn't actually need this. I have this at home. You will be shocked how much your kids will hang on to that. And even if they don't say anything, they will remember it. Another thing that has really helped with finding contentment and it's one of the things that I'm still working on, but it is not having FOMO. FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. And it is definitely one of the biggest struggles that I have had in my life. And if you haven't seen yet, uh, my last video was all about getting off of social media, how I took a six month break, and how I'm getting ready to take another six months break. Because I had so many beneficial things happen while I was off of social media. And one of the biggest things is that my state of contentment, my state of homeostasis grew exponentially when I was off of social media. And here's why. When you are on social media, you are comparing yourself. Even if you're one of those people who say, you know, I love my life, this is great, I'm doing awesome, you are comparing yourself every time you get on social media. Whether it is to people you know that maybe are on awesome vacations, whether it is to influencers that you follow that say you need something, tell you you're less than, even if they're not saying those words, when they push things and say that you will be happier when you get this or you need this product because it'll change your life, they're telling you that you are not happy with what you are or where you are right in this moment. It's also all those commercials. Apparently we watch like 4,000 uh, different kinds of ads every day. And I would guarantee a bulk of them are on social media if that's where you spend a lot of your time. The nice thing about not having cable in my house is that I don't see a whole lot of commercials because I just see the shows that I wanna watch. But when I spent tons and tons of time getting off and on Facebook and Instagram, I was constantly seeing ads and Little did I know, they were influencing me and telling me that I was missing out on things that I apparently needed. Now, if you're looking at influencers or you're looking at um, friends on social media, while it is nice to see your friends doing awesome things and it's amazing to see these influencers and where they're going, it's telling your brain that that moment in their life should be happening to you too. And it's also telling you that these people are doing so much better than you. And believe it or not, we all have problems. And I think that's one of the things that's really hard for us to remind ourselves when we're going through this downward spiral of looking at other people doing awesome things and feeling FOMO is that that is an extremely curated moment in their life. And we don't know what their problems are, but I can guarantee they're having some because we all are. We all have our issues, we all have family members die, or people move away that we love, or we lose a job. We all have hard things we're going through, but they're never gonna tell you that. Because why would you share that? Why would you share your struggles if you're trying to influence people that you're doing so awesome? Of course they're not gonna show you that. So the fear of missing out is definitely something that you can work on one, by getting off of social media, which is something that I had done. And I did find a lot of benefit from getting off of it. I got off basically everything, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. I wasn't on TikTok. Uh, luckily, I haven't ever gone down that hole. But getting off of these things and taking a break or deleting the app from your phone um, can really make it harder for you to get on. It makes you think about it before you get on. If you delete the app, at least you have to log back in every time. And that is a moment that you can take to remind yourself 
that what you're getting ready to see, either you don't need to see it and maybe you need to get back off, or you can remind yourself that you are content with your life, that you are doing awesome where you are, and that these people are just showing you their happiest moment. You might not even want their problems. <laughs> Momo does one more thing to you. When you're constantly looking at other people and you're seeing how good their life is and how much you want to be like that, you're just trying to always better your life. You're not finding contentment. You are constantly moving the goalpost. Every time that you go on a social media site or you see an ad, it's telling you things that you are missing out on. It's telling you your brain subconsciously that your life is not good enough. You need this new car or you need this set of makeup in order to be fabulous. You're moving the goalpost for yourself. And that is literally one of the hardest things for me to change about my reaction. Um, to when I see ads, just when I feel like, you know, I am content, I'm happy with where I am, you know, this might not be the best house ever, but I am so grateful that I have a house. I'm so grateful that I have uh, a great family and a job that I really like. All of a sudden, I forget those things and I go on social media and I see people traveling, which is something that I really enjoy doing. And they're moving to places that I've always wanted to move to. And there you go. The goalpost has been moved. And all of a sudden, I am feeling really bad about myself and thinking that my life sucks. It's just not true. I have some great things going on for me, and so do you. You just need to remember them in those moments where it's hard, when you're really feeling the FOMO, and you're looking at people's lives, and you're wishing you had them, and you don't understand why. Take a step back and say to yourself out loud, we're grateful for where you are. And that, yes, that doesn't mean that you don't have to keep working for goals and setting goals and achieving goals, but it means that you don't want to live somebody else's life. It takes away from the moment that you have in your life that you're living right now because you moved the goalpost and you want to go further. The last thing I really have to say about finding contentment and ways that I work on it in myself in my own life is by decluttering. So I have just recently decluttered a lot of kids' toys and donated them. And decluttering is really one of those moments where you can just remember in your own house how much you have, which is for me usually too much. And you can remember that you have all these great things already in your life and you don't need to go out and buy more. So decluttering is definitely a great way to Remind yourself that you can be content with what you have. What I have found is that when I declutter and I have less around me, I actually seek out having less. I don't want to fill up that space with a bunch of stuff because I just decluttered it. So finding contentment and decluttering at the same time is something that I've learned to do only within the past like year and a half or so. It's really difficult, but decluttering can really bring a lot of contentment if you don't re-clutter that room again, but you enjoy the space that you've created and the things that you do love and put in there instead of filling it back up with a bunch of more stuff that you didn't actually really need. Also along with decluttering the actual physical belongings around you, declutter the noise that you have going around you. So a new thing that I started this year is I am writing down one thing that I am grateful for each day and I am reading one page of a book. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, <laughs> I know, but I feel like when you take little steps in the direction of something that you want to become your real goal, like I would like to read more books, but I'm not just gonna tell myself I wanna read more books. I'm gonna build in little steps because it's one of those things that I forget to do a lot. So turning off the noise of the TV at night before I go to bed and instead telling myself, well, I only have to read one page has actually pushed me to read a lot more. And last night I read like 10 pages before I fell asleep. So giving yourself little goals of turning off the noise, maybe reading a book, enjoying a game with your child, or really just sitting in peace and thinking about what you're grateful for, writing one thing down in your notebook or saying it out loud. 
just giving yourself a moment to step back out of all of the noise of social media and the TV and movies and people talking to you. And remember that wherever you are right now, guys, is where you were supposed to be. And though I don't want anyone to stop from achieving your dreams, you need to stop setting the goalpost so far based on FOMO or based on what other people are telling you to do. But set some achievable goals for yourself and build in little steps like me reading that book so that you can achieve them. And the little bit of contentment that I am exercising in my own life, I will say has helped me become the person that I really want to be. I am actually working on and exercising the muscle of becoming the person I want to be. No, I'm not there yet, guys, and maybe you aren't either, but it is actually attainable to work towards a goal of contentment. If you remember those things that I was talking about and you remember how great you are right now, because really finding contentment is the ability to become who you really want to be. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week.